David in the Psalms, he cries out to God in one of his hardest moments, and he says, Why are you cast down, O my soul? I shall yet praise it, the help of my countenance and my God, that's Psalm 43, 5. And that was David's personal cry, which, which then, you know, for us, it's like, yes, we have those cries too when we go through really hard times. But then this verse was God speaking back to us. And he said in Isaiah 49, 23, I am the Lord. Those who hope in me will not be disappointed. Hi, welcome to the Zan Tyler podcast. This podcast is brought to you by BJU Press Homeschool. Homeschooling is an exciting adventure we take with our children. One of the most challenging parts of this journey is choosing the curriculum you want to use. BJU Press Homeschool is a curriculum you can trust. All the books, resources, and videos have been designed with you and your child in mind. Their curriculum is educationally robust and rich, taking into account that children have different learning styles, strengths, and needs. Mom, you are in charge. BJU Press Homeschool is here to come alongside and support you. Do you need help with the teaching load, or is there a subject you just don't want to teach? Their amazing video courses are available for all grades and almost every subject. BJU Press Homeschool believes that homeschooling can produce a new generation of students who know God, love their neighbors, and stand firm in their faith. For more information, go to BJUPressHomeschool.com. That's BJUPressHomeschool.com. Today is Wednesday, October 2nd. Just a week ago, Monday, on September 23rd, Joe and I drove home from Nashville. Now, I'm in South Carolina. It was a very uneventful trip. We drove, you know, through the mountains uh, by Knoxville, I-40, all the way to Asheville, 26th Asheville to almost home. And it's always just a gorgeous drive. And, of course... After we got home three days later, Hurricane Helene hit, and it's hard to believe that all those roads we just traveled, a lot of them are gone, whole chunks of I-40. Asheville is devastated. Uh, Even in Columbia, we had, where I live, we had um, terrible repercussions from the storm, but we saw, we have seen a hurricane hit Western South Carolina and North Carolina like nothing I've ever seen. So we're going to talk about disaster relief today. Um, Not right away, but we are going to get to that as an important part of this podcast. Uh, You know, it's interesting because I'm right here in South Carolina. We've been watching all the coverage and somebody asked the governor of North Carolina, why weren't you prepared for this? And he said, how can you prepare for something that's never happened before? I mean, we've never had a hurricane hit. I don't think we've ever had one hit Western South Carolina, much less the mountains of North Carolina. Blizzards, yes, in North Carolina. Uh, Hurricanes, no. So this is just, this is a new experience for all of us. We're certainly used to rain and storms. Hurricanes occasionally will get as far inland as we are, about 100 miles, but very, very rarely. So this has just been um, just a a disaster of epic proportions. Our hearts are with you. Joe, my husband, grew up in Greenville. We, We both went to Furman there. We were engaged in the mountains at Lake Lure. I don't know if you've seen Lake Lure on the news, but it looks like it, it looks like a dump with wood and huge, just huge, huge pieces of equipment and boat docks and everything in it. It's hard to believe that was once a um, a, a lake. We were there just two years ago celebrating our 45th anniversary. And so we, the mountains of North Carolina hold huge significance and memories for us too. So I just want to say We are praying for you. Our sponsor of the podcast is BJU Press Homeschool. I know they were affected uh, by a lot of the weather in Greenville, but not like you guys in North Carolina, Eastern Tennessee, and some parts of Georgia. So our prayers are with you. Um, Our thoughts are with you. I know there are a lot of people we know involved in rescue efforts, uh, and we will be involved as we can. So we just, so 
I just want you to know as a part of this podcast, uh, we love our listeners and our viewers, and we are praying for you as you go through all of this. So I'm going to introduce Tracy to you now. Tracy is my dear, dear friend from many years ago, and she holds a special position at HSLDA, uh, Homeschool Legal Defense Association. She's the Director of Development, but she's also been involved with Homeschool HSLDA, their Compassion Fund, for probably two decades now. And so we are going to talk about what HSLDA is doing to help homeschoolers in the midst of this disaster. But just so you can appreciate the depth and breadth of Tracy's experience and her giving heart to the homeschooling community, we're going to start at the very beginning. So Tracy, tell us a little bit about you and Chris and how y'all got involved in homeschooling. Sam, thank you so much for inviting me on your program, and I, I love that we go back so many years together, and, <laughs> I do too. and that you have so many, so many memories of Chris. Um, so, so Chris and I were married in 1984, and the summer we were married, Chris had actually, um, as a legal intern in law school at that time, had a research project for the summer. And it was to research all case law and statutes that had anything to do with homeschooling. That's the first time we'd heard of homeschooling, really. And so by the end of that summer, he had about a 450-page document. I he remember back... reading through that, actually. <laughs> <So>. <laughs> yeah, and nobody had ever done that. And so he went mm -hmm. back uh, my last year of undergrad that, that fall, his last year of law school, and he wanted to work in constitutional law. But... He, um, when he applied to work for a constitutional, a Christian constitutional um, organization, um, which was then run by Mike Ferris, who was senior counsel, he saw Chris's research and he said, this guy knows more about homeschooling than I do. We need to hire him for HSLDA. We hadn't heard of HSLDA. He didn't apply. It had only been around for two years. Um, but when he had done all that research that summer, you know, we had just gotten married, so we didn't even have kids either, <laughs> but we, <laughs> but we knew, but we knew we loved the idea of homeschooling and that we wanted to homeschool. And so in 1985, Chris was then hired after law, after he graduated from law school to be HSLDA's first full-time attorney. And then it was not, you know, never looking back. And then the next year, you know, uh, two years later, we started having kids and just kept having them <laughs> and we homeschooled them all. <laughs> so you had seven children, one set of twins, Charity and Bethany, I think, because I remember praying for you guys as you had many problems just during the whole pregnancy part of the twins. And so what a blessing that both of them survived so well. Uh, so, all right, so we know how you heard about homeschooling. And so I guess it was just a given you were going to homeschool. And so, so what, so how many years did you homeschool, Tracy, in all? Yeah, so with the seven kids, it ended up being 26 years of homeschooling. And, uh, you know, we started when our oldest was about three. She came to me and said, Mommy, teach me to read. <laughs> <laughs> That's amazing. And then, and, and then we started that and then we just never stopped, you know, so for 26 years. And my youngest is now 26. So oh. he graduated about, um, I don't know, nine years ago now. That, that's so. amazing. Okay, so somewhere in your journey together, Chris developed multiple sclerosis, MS, and he fought that, I want to say, for like 15 years. Is that correct? That's right. That's right. Yeah. And, and I just, I'll, I mean, I will never forget Chris, of course, because you both have been such valued friends of mine, but I can remember him going to conferences and he certainly couldn't have done it without you when he was not mobile anymore and going through all kinds of treatment, traditional and non-traditional to keep going and, and the way he wanted to speak and encourage homeschoolers really until the day he died. Yeah. Yeah. He, uh, he had, he did have MS for 15 years. The last four years or so were really, really um, difficult. And he, he did, he worked right up until God called him home because he loved encouraging homeschooling families. And, 
you know, with our near loss of our twins and my own health issues and his health issues, we, you know, we knew what, what leaning on God looked like. And, um, and we just, you know, it's hard to homeschool when you don't have any external issues you got to deal with. Yes, that's right. It's challenging. But then when you run into, you know, chronic illness or, um, other kinds of struggles, loss, and it's, it makes it all the more challenging. And so he, he, and I did a little bit of speaking, you know, back before he passed in, in 2009, but, um, we really, really wanted to just encourage families that you can homeschool even in a mid hardship. You know, I'll never forget because even the, during the time of his death, I, we were at the, the national leadership conference. We all just got back from that in, no, uh, in, uh, the end of September, by the way, from Nashville, that's the trip I was talking about. But Chris came to the National Leadership Conference in Colorado Springs and ended up, I think, passing away in Colorado Springs. We all got to see him. We all got to say our goodbyes. And then somebody at Focus on the Family opened up their home. And I know that's where y'all were with him Ruth, in yeah. those um, last days of his life here, which we know that Chris is... Um, busy in heaven, doing all the good things and the good work just in perfect ways. So, but, but I know that that's really been a trauma for your family. So I just, I want to show you this because this means so much to me. Chris, you know, that verse in Hebrews that talks about, even though he's dead, he still speaks. Hmm. Well, that's how Chris is in my life. Um, I don't know if you can see this. This is just a a, a, a small award to other people. It was hugely significant in my life. The Chris Clicka Award, which HSLDA uh, Mike Ferris and Mike Smith awarded to me in 2015 at our National Leadership Conference. And it says, now I'm not sure these things are true about me, but I know they're all true about Chris. It says your steadfast courage, devotion, dedication, and commitment to home education over the years. This is the part that gets to me almost every day. Reflect the unwavering spirit and inspiration inspirational leadership of Chris Clicka to advance homeschooling here and around the world. And so when I get tired or think I want to quit, uh, I just think about you and Chris. I think about all you went through, um, especially in those last 10 years of his illness, to make sure we were all encouraged. And we, because these were the days when homeschoolers really needed encouragement. These weren't the easy, cool days of homeschooling. And he, he just played such a monumental role in continuing to encourage homeschoolers really until the day he died. And I just want to thank you for that, Tracy, because he couldn't have done that with seven children without your, unt- without your untiring love and devotion and support. So, you know, what thank a legacy. You. Thank what you, a legacy. Dan. So It was a privilege. So, <laughs> you know, it's interesting to me. Um, because HSLDA was so formative in our homeschooling years in terms of uh, keeping me out of jail on a couple of different occasions, keeping me out of court or being with me while I was in court, filing lawsuits here to get things uh, going legally. That was just a huge part of our lives. So when, when HSLDA started I think what then was called maybe the Homeschool Compassion Program or Fund back in 2000, I want to say. Um, it was, it was, it came from a, a, a donation from a friend of HSLDA who actually served on its board for many years to start helping widows who were homeschooling, widows who had lost their husbands. And I remember I sat in on the first meeting. I remember this as my anniversary date, August 20th, um, 2008, Chuck uh, Chuck, Chuck Hurst supplied the year for me. And so I've been a real um, cheerleader and proponent of what HSLDA has done to give back to others as if they haven't given enough up, given us enough over the years. They have a compassion fund that helps widows, special needs families, military families, and those who are suffering through disaster. And I think, Tracy, how amazing it is that after God took you through this incredible homeschool journey with seven p- kids and like you talked about your chronic health issues and then Chris's and his death, you knew what it was like to be a widow 
and still continuing to homeschool. And so I just think how timely of God that you became after Chris passed, I guess years later, you became the director of development for HSLDA, but you've always worked so closely with their compassion program. So just tell us a little bit about what HSLDA does for families um, in the midst of disaster. Yeah, sure thing, Sam. So um, while our our core program, HSLDA Compassion, provides curriculum grants to families that are going through hardship, they're financially based grants to, as Ann mentioned, widows and single parents and you know military low income families, um, families whose kids have special needs. Another area that we really step up the effort to try to help families additionally is whenever a homeschooling family is going through disaster and not just widespread national disasters, but also, um, you know, a family in their house gets destroyed by a tornado or they've got molds that just basically ruins the house. So we, we help individual families that way through a small, it's a very small grant. It's not a lot but it's used primarily to help with replacing lost curriculum, but it can also be used to help with emergency needs, like even food and water and diapers and fuel. Um, you know, it, it it has been used for a variety of things. We, we even, I remember one story way back from like 2013 that we helped the family just through that grant be able to buy a new stove because so much had been destroyed when they lost their home to flooding. And so, we just made it possible for them to cook <laughs> on the stove, you know? I mean, it, it every little bit helps. That's right. That's exactly right. And I, I mean, I just know, I was talking to Trudge, Chuck Hurst yesterday, who's the vice president of HSLDA, and also got me involved in the ambassador program those many years ago for the Compassion Fund. Um, he said that HSLDA has given $15 million over the years to homeschool families in need. And I, I just have been privileged to stand by and watch and be a very, very, very small part of that. And so um, it, it, and I know that the Christmas gifts and all the things y'all do, while it's not hundreds of thousands of dollars to each family by any means, there's still such significant gifts and timely needs. So tell us a little bit um, how homeschool families can reach out to you um, from all over the Southeast because of Hurricane uh, Helene to, to find out about the disaster relief program. Sure, Sam. Yeah, in the past five years, we've given out nearly $300,000 just to families facing disaster. And that's all through donations that come in. So if a family is, is you know, in the midst of a, uh, a disaster like Helene, they can just contact hslda.org forward slash compassion. That's our compassion program. And on that page, if you scroll down, there's a, a little description and an application link to fill out an application for a disaster relief grant. So it's really easy. And one thing that's a little different from our curriculum grants is we sort of fast track the disaster relief because we want families to get the help they need as fast as possible. Mm -hmm. Well, um, that is so encouraging. And also if people want to give uh, there's a donate button. I, I think at that same website, same you link. You can actually, so the easiest way, you know, we've got a lot of stuff going out right now to um, let people know that we're here to give help. And if they want to, um, if they, if they want to get help as well as give help, but the fastest way is just to go to hslda.org and click on the donate button up at the top right corner. That way okay. it's easy to remember. Okay. And if you just donate to the compassion program, we can use it for anything that the Compassion Program does, including disaster. And that's uh, it's 501c3, so those dedu every donation you give is also tax deductible. So, Tracy, tell us a little bit, I, I mean, just from your own perspective of dealing with, like you say, your disaster with losing your husband, and it was a disaster for all of us, really, when Chris passed away, but it's not something like a natural disaster that affects hundreds of thousands of households. What are some of the things or Bible verses that were special to you in terms of giving you the strength to carry on within the four walls of your home? 
Sure, Sam. Yeah, and I, I would say um, two things. One is the power of hope. And um, and that's one of the things we hear from families over and over again, is that, you know, your your grant gave us hope. And so sometimes we have to fight for hope. And the way that I've done that over the years is one is to be in the word of God, but also give myself time to just sit, sit still at the feet of Jesus and just let him speak over me. I remember the very last year of Chris's life. We had no idea how long he was going to be with us, but this was the 15th year of his MS, and that year was the hardest year. He was having all kinds of issues that he'd never had before, and I was just, I was still teaching five children. Two had graduated, one had married the year before, and I was just so perplexed, like, what do I do, Lord, because we need to keep taking care of dad, and yet I want to keep up with the homeschooling. You know, family comes first. Your family's needs come before all all the academics and all of that. But I was really committed to her homeschooling. And I just remember crying out to God again and again for direction. And I just kept hearing him say, trust me, trust me. And, and then I just kept grounding myself in the word of God to give me hope in God's promises. And I just want to share one, a verse, a couple of verses that, that really meant a lot to me during that, that last year, especially of Chris's life, but really through the whole time. And David in the Psalms, he cries out to God in one of his hardest moments. And he says, why are you cast down, O my soul? I shall yet praise him, the help of my countenance and my God, That's Psalm 43, 5. And that was David's personal cry, which, which then, you know, for us, it's like, yes, we have those cries too when we go through really hard times. But then this verse was God speaking back to us. And he said in Isaiah 49, 23, I am the Lord. Those who hope in me will not be disappointed. Mm -hmm. And so you can know God's promise that he will not disappoint you if you put your hope in him, even in the hardest time. That is so precious, Tracy. You know, I know that I know you have been talking to people that have been affected by the floods. And just because we live here, we've been talking to so many people. A a dear friend of mine, homeschool mom, I knew her in high school, lives in Asheville. They have many children and many, many more grandchildren. And she, uh, we were texting on her way to Columbia a couple of days ago. And then I think they just had to reroute to Atlanta. And so we, we just know there are families who have been displaced from their homes, families who have lost everything, families who were just without power for a week, which is enough, you know. And so I think those verses are so applicable to us, um, no matter where we are in life and no matter what we're facing, but, but we're, I I was looking through, I can't remember if it was your LinkedIn page, Tracy, or Facebook, and you were just giving, um, examples of some of the relief that's going on, especially in Western North Carolina and sharing stories of people. And, uh, one woman, young woman who lost her seven-year-old son and her parents, to the flood while she's watching. And, you know, so there's, there's really um, much, much grief and much, much devastation. And, and we can ask God why, but we also know that the hope of the gospel is our greatest hope. Um, And in the midst of all of this, uh, if we turn to the Lord, he will not disappoint us. And I think it also reminds us of heaven, that this earth is not our home. That's right. That's right. We have a future and a hope. That's right. And plans. It, it, scripture tells us he has That's plans right. for our good and not to harm us. And um, I, I learned a long time ago in my Christian walk that God is often much more concerned about my faith than my comfort level. <laughs> <laughs> and, 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 you know, we know that's because we're earthen vessels and, um, and he is fitting us for heaven 
which is a glor glorious and sometimes painful thing. So Tracy, how are how are things in Virginia? Did y'all come through this relatively unscathed? I know we had all kinds of internet problems just from all the rain that's happened. Yeah. Well, actually, when the hurricane um, hit the hardest, uh, particularly in North Carolina, I had been in North Carolina last week filming. We we're actually down there to interview a widow we helped this past year with children, and she's going to be our kind of our year end story. What a she's such an amazing woman of faith. Um, just her husband, you know, they went to bed one night and he didn't wake up the next day. And mm. she's she's younger than me, quite a bit younger than me. And just uh, was a, a shock for for her whole family. But we were down there filming her story. And um, I left right before the storm came, came through North Carolina. Wow. So I sort wow. of felt like it was following behind me. And I was checking the weather reports constantly. So I was headed back, back up to Virginia. And um so I missed, you know, getting uh, in the middle of it all, but I did get home. And I think the worst problem I have, sadly, it's a little humorous, is my grass is really, really long. <laughs> and I'm wondering when the rain's going to stop so I can mow it. But, I, I, but, but, but all of the devastation, I mean, I have friends everywhere down in North Carolina and Boone and other places and in Asheville area and in Black Mountain. I mean, I, so many and some weren't able their their family wasn't able to get in touch with them and so um so our heart you know my heart is really goes out to everybody mm -hmm. who's been impacted but as an organization we're we're here and we are praying for you and we are ready to help you um so please let us know if you need help you know it's interesting because many years ago i worked for broadman and home and publishers in nashville which is, I think, if you consider their Bible division as the largest Christian publisher in the world, and we were starting a new homeschool division there. So I drove, I made the drive to Nashville, I don't know how many dozens of times in those, I worked from home, but um, made that trip so often. And one of the things at the time that Lifeway had was Ridgecrest Conference Center. And we've had many of our national leadership conferences there. And so all of those memories of all of the ministry that has happened in various places and levels of North Carolina and all of the families who live there. Um, and it, it's just, I'm just like you. I, I've just have a, I've had a hard time really trying to grasp it all, but we do want you to know, I, I just want to speak for our sponsor for just a minute, BJU Press Homeschool. It is a praying company, uh, just like you were talking about with HSLDA, Tracy. We have a leadership team meeting, and I know that some of that time will be spent just praying for mm -hmm. so many um, victims in this current storm. So know that uh, the people at BJU Press Homeschool, uh, which is located in Greenville, uh, they are praying for you. They understand the gravity and the weight of this storm. And it is a very giving company, um, Homeworks by Precept and BJU Press Homeschool. They just have a heart to give. And I have watched them since the last six years I've been with them uh, in a consulting capacity. I have watched them just give so much time and money to the homeschooling community in ways that they will never see a physical return on that investment. So we, I know we have donated thousands and thousands and thousands of dollars worth of curriculum over the years, I think to the foundation, to the homeschool compassion um, program and other places where people distribute cur uh, curriculum to those in need. So it's just, um, we're, for those of you who are suffering, we love you. We're praying for you and we're praying um, for God's relief in an awful situation. As we close today, I just want to read a few verses that I have been contemplating uh, since Hurricane Helene hit from Psalm 46 uh, verses 1, 2, and 10. God is our refuge and strength, a very present help in trouble. Therefore will not we fear, though the earth be removed and though the mountains be carried into the midst of the sea whoever experiences 
back to the sea to carry mountains in eastern Tennessee and western North Carolina really into the sea in many respects. Be still and know that I am God. I will be exalted. Uh, whoops. Be still and know that I am God. I will be exalted among the earth. I will be exalted in the earth. And so we know that God is still on his throne and he does not just sit back and watch our trouble. He helps us in time of trouble. So I want to thank you, Tracy, for, for being part of this podcast. And one more time, if people want to reach out to you or the disaster um, fund, how should they do that? Yeah. So if they're looking to get help with uh, disaster relief, they just go to hslda.org forward slash compassion and just scroll down the page and you'll see it right there. Okay. And, uh, and as always, you can find me at zantyler.com and on social media. And we just want to say thank you for being with us today. Thank you for praying with us. Uh, and thank you for helping so many who are in trouble. We know that there are many, many thousands of people involved in relief. And if you're part of the disaster, know that our hearts and our thoughts and our prayers are with you. Uh, may God continue to bless us and help us here in the United States of America. And uh, thank you. 